share your screen the way you shared it again. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, that's going to work better. So if you try again sharing your screen, um, mm -hmm. and we can quickly check how is that going to happen. Hello, Donny. Hello, everyone. It's coming in. We just uh, quickly want to get up the screen, and then we're going to start. So just hang in tight. Uh, we're looking forward to have Gaspar and Eastland share today's session. So do you see my screen? Yeah, we can see your screen. Just need to go to the slideshow. Yeah. Yeah. I'm on slideshow. Is it is it coming? No, it's not coming. No, unbelievable. Um, you you did send me the slideshow, right? Yes. Okay, let me see by Actually, myself. No. Investing part two. Let me quickly check. Okay. So, is when you can stop your screen share, then I'm gonna do it from my side. Okay. 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 Okay, hello everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, we're getting our slides ready. I hope you're all ready and looking forward to today's session. Um, as soon as my screen are on, I'm gonna it's gonna go live and it's gonna go over to Eastland and Gaspar. Thank you for being here today and this may day giving up your time to come and listen about how to invest. For those who haven't watched the first part, the first part is on on to be able to watch the replay. But today is gonna be all focused on how to invest. So as my sh screen is coming ready, um, I'm just going to, this one, you, you will just uh, um, make a note for me when I need to change slides. Um, so just yeah. give me a heads up and then I will make sure that so we if, change. If, if I do this, uh, then you have to change the slide. Fantastic. So you have the slide up, huh? Yeah. I'm just going to put my mic off and my camera. Um, so I won't be able to respond back, So I will, but I will be able to listen mm -hmm. to you. But I still, Cobos, we don't see the slides, we see your screen only. Yeah, I'm just going to put down my camera. Uh-huh. Still, we don't see the slide. Now it's coming. Fantastic, thank you. So we don't play any music, we just go right away, right, Cobos? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's start. So this is this is uh, part two of our presentation together with Gaspar, and uh, it starts with the quote: uh, "Predicting the rain doesn't count; building arcs does." So, I think last time we we talked about uh, the prediction of the rain, and now uh, in this part we, we will talk about how to build arcs. Uh, but before I go there, maybe a short introduction uh, from my side. So. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, with Gaspar, we, we, we are former colleagues and uh, we used to work for uh, big multinational companies. I mean, once upon a time, he used to be my boss. Uh, we both retired uh, from, from our corporate jobs uh, and uh, Gaspar is doing full-time investing and, um, and I'm actually doing consulting gigs and investing. And uh, since this whole <coughs> COVID uh, crisis uh, broke out, we are in a constant discussion about and we try to understand what's happening on the market. And by the way, actually, so, so Gaspar is investing millions and he's quite successful with that. I'm investing much less uh, and uh, ups and downs, but nevertheless, uh, we have our curiosity and, uh, and we try to understand, you know, what's going on and what to do. Next slide, <coughs> Kobus. Do you want to add anything, Gaspar? No, just maybe um, uh, Ishvan said that he has ups and downs. Actually, Ishvan typically is right on what to invest, uh, but not always on how. And and uh, and uh, today we are focusing on that. And uh, Ishvan has a, a quite a wide experience on what not to do. So I think uh, for <laughs> me, for me was was a, a pleasure to work with him because he's uh, in this business longer than me. And uh, he knows the traps. <laughs> yeah. 
Definitely, and uh, I mean the other thing what uh, what we didn't say we we don't do this uh, to promote anything. Uh, we do do this because uh, this presentation for you because this is our passion. This is uh, this is what we really try, uh, like to do: understanding what's going on and investing into the right thing. And uh, we will have some <clears throat> some material what uh, what you can download from from the website uh, to help you and, and guide you. Um, and then we would also love to get in touch with you if you want to have um, a deeper discussion outside uh, this session. So let's uh, let's start with the summary of, uh, of uh, we presented last time. Actually, Gaspar presented it, and uh, this is the, this is the summary of uh, of this uh, macro. We call it macroeconomic session, uh, where we try to uh, try to understand the trend. So. The first thing is, uh, you know, uh, there are discussions back and forth and news and uh, a lot of information um, and uh, everybody is hoping that uh, when <clears throat> the countries uh, are reopening and there is a, a vaccine available, then uh, this uh, this whole crisis will be gone and everything will go back to normal. But the, <clears throat> but the point is uh, that uh, what we talked in detail last time, we are actually talking about the COVID crisis, but in reality, we have a global credit crisis. So all the companies and all the governments, they are up to that, uh, up to their eyeball. And the COVID did not create this crisis. This this was already there. It, it just bursted it. So, so actually, two things are colliding here. One is a, a huge economic shock uh, coming from the uh, from COVID. And the other thing is, uh, is this huge uh, debt crisis, what was uh, looming in the background anyhow. Now, the the question here is whether the central banks are having uh, <clears throat> and the government having a good plan. I mean, we talked in details. You know, what are the uh, what are the tools they have uh, to to boost the economy? What are the tools they have to cool down the economy? But uh, step <clears throat> step by step, in the last uh, couple of years, the, they ended up being in a corner, and the only a uh, weapon they have left, which now they are using extensively, is printing money. Now, the question is, is that a good plan? And we have here uh, Buzz Lightyear, so they are actually printing money up to infinity. And uh, we, <clears throat> how to say, we, we can we can look at it uh, uh, many ways. Uh, it's a question mark whether, whether this is a good plan. Uh, we believe, and, and uh, you, you hear also the news that uh, that unemployment is is, is rocketing. Uh, um, a lot of uh, companies filing for bankruptcies. At the moment, what is uh, what is happening out there? Uh, there is a huge uh, deflationary uh, pressure, and uh, and this is this is the current situation. But uh, but we believe this will all end in an inflation, and then who will pay? Uh, usually we so 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 the ordinary people with the salaries with the savings with the pensions and then the question was uh, at the end of the session what to do and our advice would be <clears throat> to move your cash into hard assets uh, or assets which behave uh, well in an in, um, inflationary environment anything to add gaspar no that's perfect next one cobus so uh, what we are what we are going to talk here. So we are we are going to cover uh, some basics here, and this whole investment uh, topic is is huge, and it's it's actually a rabbit hole which is extremely deep. However, there are some uh, principles uh, which are very simple, and this is what we are going to talk about. We will talk about the basic notions, the fundamentals. Actually, a little bit about whether trading is a good idea. So this is what Gaspar mentioned. Uh, I have some experience with that. Uh, so so I'm, I'm more than willing to share what are the pitfalls. Then we will talk about investment alternatives, uh, specifically for this environment, what is ahead of us or where we are in. And uh, uh, to note, uh, we have uh, uh, strategies or we thought about strategies which are low maintenance. So So you don't have to spend... Uh, extreme uh, time in front of the computer screen and watch the charts and analyze the trends. We we were thinking about investment uh, strategies, which are uh, how to say for for ordinary people who have a job and they don't want to spend so much time uh, how to say understanding the market. And then a little bit we will talk about how to start investing. But here here there is an important note because when we prepared ourselves for this presentation. We also try to understand, you know, the audiences from South Africa mainly. So, what are the what are the investment 
uh, how is the landscape in, in South Africa? And we understood it's, mu it's more complex. You know, we are both in Europe um, and uh, we, we have to admit that we don't know all the details about South Africa. Uh, so if you want to really invest your money uh, and we trigger you to do something, uh, please seek uh, local advice and, and local expertise. And actually, you have to really understand in your environment uh, what is possible and what is not possible because you are ultimately responsible for your financial future. Just one comment. This, this, um, um, we are going to share a document. We are going to upload the document that is like a guide for practical things, how to get a broker and these type of things that you need to invest. And um, we included uh, some comments about South Africa because we know a little bit. But uh, again, we are not living there. We didn't do it ourselves uh, firsthand. So it's you should take that like a like a beginning of your research on how to do it, um, because uh, we don't feel having the authority to 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 guide you. But at least we had put together some some guidelines that you can start with that and then and then go. Next up, Kobus. So let's start, let's start with some basic notions, risk and reward. And um, I mean, one, one thing is, uh, um, okay, so how much risk you, you want to take, how much risk you can take, and, and how much risk you have to take. I mean, we will talk about, <clears throat> we will talk about that uh, in a minute, uh, why is that important. But uh, uh, if you have your uh, financial goals uh, and, and you know what you want to achieve, so like a retirement with, with millions, um, and then you have uh, um, the available uh, money, what you can invest. This is what you can afford. And then, <clears throat> then um, is is up to your risk profile how much risk uh, you want to take. One one and and out of that uh, you, you you have to choose a strategy. But you need to also keep in mind as you are getting older and as you are getting closer and closer to retirement. You want to take less and less, uh, less and less risk because you need to bridge uh, uh, the couple of years uh, what uh, what you hopefully will enjoy in, in your retirement. Uh, but uh, you don't want to risk there uh, uh, your money because you want to how to say enjoy life. And the other thing is which is which is important uh, uh, to mention here is. Uh, um, risk and reward goes uh, hand in hand. So, so if you have an investment which has a high return, it is normally uh, coupled with uh, with higher risk. And if you have uh, an investment which is low risk, uh, that is normally coupled with uh, 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 with low uh, returns. And as an example, you know you can have all your money in in a bank, uh, and uh, and uh, and that is 100% safe. Uh, but most probably, when uh, when uh, inflation kicks in, you are going to lose uh, the buying power of of, uh, of your money. So the risk is low and the return is low, or even it can go into negative. Let's go uh, to the next slide, Kobus. I mean, sorry for this uh, this uh, clicks, but somehow the the, the presentation I couldn't uh, share uh, via my computer. So let's talk a little bit about time and purchasing uh, uh, power of your money. So this is this is an interesting thing. So again, this is this is data from Europe, but I think it's also reapplicable really to South Africa on on different levels. But if you look back the last 20 years in Europe, we we had a relatively low inflation, two percent. Uh, before that, there was a 25 years period uh, with uh, with an inflation of 7.2 percent. And if you look at the look at the bottom, uh, you will see what happens to the purchasing power of uh, of your money in an inflationary environment. So what is probably because we we are not equipped uh, to 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 understand uh, what a little percentage uh, can mean over time. Uh, so you don't have really a sense for it, but but if you look at it, uh, uh, if you have thousand um, dollars at the beginning and 20, and and six percent constant inflation, twenty five year, year later with a six percent inflation, which is not huge, actually, you lose eighty percent of the purchasing power of your money. So click one more, uh, Kobus. There is a there is a big watch out. <coughs> um, uh, that inflation eats away uh, the buying power of your money. So if 
<coughs> we are in an inflationary environment. If inflation uh, is, uh, is uh, supposed to pick up, you better think about to move your money in, into somewhere else, which is, uh, which is keeping its value. Next one. And, and linking, to the the, yeah, linking to the previous uh, session, uh, the chances of us to have a decade above uh, 6 or 7% are high, right? So given what's going on, as discussed in part one. So this is an interesting chart, and this is an int interesting chart, especially uh, people who are young. These are three uh, different scenarios, and uh, uh, it takes into account uh, a five thousand dollar investment per year, which is uh, for some of us is not a, a big amount of money. Maybe for for some of you, it's uh, it's a significant up amount of money. But let's say invest in Europe <coughs> for for someone. Uh, Five, to put aside and invest five thousand a year is 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 not a big amount of money. I think most of the people could actually afford it. And then you look at the scenario: if you if you are able to achieve a seven percent uh, uh, rate of return or a seven percent uh, increase year on year, uh, what happens? So there is one scenario <coughs> uh, which is Susan. Um, uh, sorry, uh, this is Chris who starts to invest uh, 5,000 every year at the age of 25, and he's at 65 retiring uh, with a million. So I think uh, this is the, the, uh, the, the, the impact of com compounding is that you actually don't need to invest uh, on a yearly basis a hell of a lot of money in order to be able to retire uh, with a million. So 5,000 every year consistently, and then uh, to achieve a 7% return, which is, you will see later on, is not impossible. And then uh, what is, uh, what is the, the other interesting thing is, uh, is uh, Susan, who starts with 25, and for 10 years, she's investing 5,000 every year, and then she stops. And you see that uh, she's, she's retiring at the age of 65, more than ha half a million. And then what is even more interesting that Bill, uh, who is a little bit uh, enjoying life uh, between the age of 25 and 35, so he's not really worried about his retirement, he's not really very worried about investment, but he starts at 35. And what you see is that even though he's on a yearly basis uh, investing 5,000, he's never going to be able to catch up uh, with, uh, with Susan. So here, <clears throat> uh, two messages that compounding interest is uh, is doing miracles um, which is the opposite of uh, of we talked about inflation and uh, <clears throat> the other thing is start early enough uh, so that uh, so that uh, so that it can make miracles for you and again what is uh, what is most probably you know when you are young you don't worry about that but the wisest advice you can give you anyone who is around the age of 25 start investing on a yearly basis, a given amount of money, and you have a chance to retire uh, with millions. Anything to add, Gaspar? No. Great. Good. Next, next one. Good. Now we, now we move to another interesting one. So, so you know, what are the asset classes? So the, the, the question is, you know, in, in what you can invest your money? So for sure on the uh, on the on this axis uh, from uh, from left to right, uh, you see different things. Uh, and uh, uh, the things you see on the on the left hand side, they are illiquid. So so for, uh, for instance, real estate. So so you, you know if you have a house, uh, for sure you can sell it, but it will take time. And then on the other uh, side of the spectrum is is cash and Bitcoin and and uh, and all this cash equivalent. Which are liquid, so so if if you have it on your account, uh, it's available every day, and uh, you can you can spend it or you can you can invest it, and in in between there are certain things. Now the question here is, uh, you know, we talked about uh, uh, protecting the buying power of your of your wealth or the, of of your money. So so where should you put uh, your money in this uh, in this inflationary uh, environment, which is most probably ahead of us, and uh, and which are <coughs> Of, of these are hard assets, and I, I just want to open up uh, a little bit the discussion, if you will, um, and and let's talk about it.
Any comments in the chat chat box? Mm. No. Okay. No. So, 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 so let's let's uh, let's uh, think a little bit about it. So, for sure, uh, for sure, um, if uh, if you if you buy a house, and and of course, you know, South Africa is a special place, but but in in uh, in uh, in most of the of the places uh, uh, in in uh, in the Western world, if you buy a real estate. It will always uh, appreciate in value, or at least minimum, it will keep uh, its value. Also, when you think about uh, the luxuries, and, and and here we had a discussion with Gaspar, uh, you know, what is a luxury, and and a nice car is 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 a luxury. But but here we we uh, what what uh, what we want to talk about is you know like if you buy uh, valuable paintings, for instance, or uh, valuable watches or, uh, or, uh, or valuable coins. So, so things, those are also hard assets. They will keep their value and they will appreciate over time. Gold and silver, we will talk about that uh, later on. They will, they, they had, uh, 5,000 years of uh, history of, uh, of, uh, uh, conserving wealth. So, so they are also hard assets. Bond. Uh, I, I think this is this is a question mark now, especially if in, uh, inflation is picking up. Stocks they have a proven track record of uh, providing good returns, and then cash is is something. It's uh, what you saw is uh, okay. It's safe. Uh, you don't risk anything, but uh, but the inflation will uh, will uh, will eat away its its power. So so practically, if you talk about hard assets, uh, 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 real estate, uh, uh, luxury. Gold and silver stocks, uh, funds, ETFs. Um, but in this presentation, we we are not going to cover uh, real estate. Of course, it's a uh, real estate and luxury. Of course, it's also a good idea, and also if you have a lot of money. But we are more uh, mainly going to focus on um, the things uh, which are falling into the category commodities and and stocks. Okay. Next one. Cobus. Good. <clears throat> so, so now we, we talked about uh, about the um, about the asset classes, and then obviously these asset classes also have um, uh, a risk profile. So, when you look at the chart, uh, the risk goes from the left hand side to the right hand side, and then the returns from from bottom up. So, what you see is that <clears throat> uh, you see a dotted line in there, which is inflation. So, so um, again. We talked about cash as something being safe, but when the inflation is picking up, it's maybe not a good idea. Uh, bonds, they are they are a little bit above inflation line, but all that we presented last time um, is uh, is uh, how to say uh, foreshadowing a, a, an era or, or a couple of years where bonds will not really give you real returns, and most probably you know uh, uh, they will be good enough to cover inflation or not even that. So maybe they can uh, they come below the inflation line, and any everything else, real estate, gold and silver stocks and ETFs, are ab uh, above the inflation line. And then we have Bitcoin. There we will talk about that. Uh, that has a that has a high risk, but uh, but uh, also has a high return as as we talked already. Next one, Kobus. And Gaspar, chip in if uh, if you want to add anything. Yep. So uh, so so again, uh, some some fundamentals, and um, uh, as I said, we don't go deep into the details, but some things you you really need to understand and uh, and uh, and do how to say think about it uh, when you are doing your research. Uh, where do you want to put your money, and uh, and how do you want to multiply your money? So one is this so-called uh, price-earnings ratio, and this price-earnings ratio can be valid for a single stock. It can be valid for for a basket of stocks like uh, like like the Standard and Poor. We are going to talk about. It can be uh, uh, for for a market as a whole. And uh, what uh, what it says is uh, is actually it's it's a, it's a number which is created out of the share price divided uh, by the earnings per share. And then you, you get a number. So, so what is that number? It's normally uh, it's in the range of 15. So, what it means that uh, 
if the company would take all of their earnings and they wanted to buy back all of their shares, it would take them 15 years. So, <clears throat> so this is, <clears throat> this is uh, and, and when, when uh, you look at a, a market as a whole or a company, uh, when you see a, a price earning ratio, which is uh, higher than that, then, uh, then that uh, market or uh, that uh, <clears throat> uh, share uh, or that company is most probably overvalued. I mean, we presented you uh, last time a couple of uh, extreme examples like Tesla. I mean, I think when we presented Tesla, it was uh, the share price was around thousand dollars, and the price earning ratio was two hundred something. So for Tesla, in order to be able to buy back all of their shares, it would take them 200, something like 30 years. But meanwhile, uh, <clears throat> their share price went up to 1,500. So there's a lot of fantasy behind that stock. Um, most probably, this will have to correct back uh, <clears throat> uh, to, to, the, to the mean. So when you are assessing an investment uh, a possibility you always have to look at uh, the price earning ratio and you have to uh, always uh, uh, decide or or understand whether that, that stock whether that uh, that uh, basket of shares is overvalued or undervalued but we will talk about that uh, a little bit more the next one is volatility i mean volatility is <clears throat> is uh, how to say the the nervousness of a of a share of an index uh, or um, uh, the nervousness means that nothing goes up or down uh, with a straight line. So uh, when you when you look at uh, a share, it uh, it has uh, always three options uh, to do from from the point on you start to look at it. It's either going up or going down or going sideways. But this movement is never a straight line. It goes uh, up and down, up and down. So so the volatility means uh, if uh, if uh, the share price is 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 making huge movements on the way up or on the way down then it's volatility high why is that important it's uh, <clears throat> it's it's important to to know because uh, um how to say this huge movement so if 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 you if you pick a volatile uh, stock the huge move, movements can really play with your psychology it can really uh, nerve you and then it can also trigger uh, <clears throat> mistakes uh, which you don't want to do. The other side of volatility, <clears throat> which uh, which is good to know, is that uh, you always have a second chance to invest. So it, it might be that uh, that uh, uh, a high volatile stock goes up. I mean, Tesla is an extreme high volatile stock at the moment. So it goes up, and <clears throat> and because the volatility is high, it most probably will also correct back, and then you have a buying opportunity if yeah, you yeah, believe yes, uh, in yes, the trend. Yes. Yesterday, Tesla dropped twenty-five percent, <laughs> as an example. Wow! Within one day. Yeah, within within one day. I haven't looked, I haven't even looked at it. So volatility is is uh, is, uh, is is something what you what you uh, uh, have to look at, and it's it's also there are periods of time when the volatility is high. It's always when the nervousness in the market is uh, is huge or high, then the volatility is high. Then you see extreme uh, big movements up and down. And again, it's always good news because you will have always a buying opportunity, but also bad news because it can really get on your nerves. And uh, <clears throat> the diversification is the last one is, uh, I think this is a general advice, uh, but but you also have to know this uh, this notion is that it's never a good idea to put all of, all of your money into one thing. So you always have to think about diversification. You always have to think about uh, to choose uh, different uh, asset classes because uh, they behave differently uh, <clears throat> through the journey of uh, of the market, and uh, you're balancing out the losses and the gains. And if you if you diversify uh, well enough. Um, you are you are smoothening out practically the volatility, and uh, and uh, at the end of the day, you you will be able to sleep well. My my mistakes, because Gaspar mentioned that uh, my mistakes uh, were always that I was putting too much into into one thing, and I can tell you this is uh, sometimes nerve wracking. So so diversification is one thing, what you really have to keep in mind uh, as you as you are going forward and you uh, <clears throat> you are trying to invest money. Next one, uh, Kobus. This is this is an interesting slide. <clears throat> Actually, this 
this is uh, this on, on this slide you have everything what will screw up your uh, your investment and here we are talking about uh, actually the question whether trading is a good idea um, and uh, <clears throat> you know you can approach uh, um, um, how to say putting the money uh, and and uh, and trying to get good returns in two ways one is that you are thinking long term so that you are you are investing on a consistent basis in in, in good performing stocks uh, indexes uh, commodities or you are trying to time the market and then buy <coughs> cheap and then uh, and, and 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 sell uh, when uh, when it is going up so this is trading now the question is is that a good idea especially that uh, <coughs> that all the mistakes uh, uh, you can do uh, uh, through that are on this uh, on this slide, and all of these things what you see here these are these are emotions and uh, and these emotions when you when you are when you don't have skin in the game you will look at them and you will say oh I can I can manage that but I can tell you uh, <clears throat> that's not true so the the emotions will take control over you and sometimes you will not be able to uh, react rationally onto uh, what is happening on the market. And it is ranges from nervousness uh, through fear, greed, anxiety, fear of missing out to doubt, and uh, <clears throat> and these are powerful things which can mess up your your whole uh, investment uh, big time. Next one, Kobus. So <clears throat> again, we are that the question is trading a good idea. So, so we talked about the emotions, and I have to tell you that emotions, unfortunately, they are not designed uh, for trading. And you can, we are, we are listing here three mistakes uh, you can do. Uh, one is, uh, and let's talk a little bit about that, penny wise dollar foolish. I mean, it, it can manifest in, in different things, but, but just two examples. One is uh, if you are trying to get uh, something at a certain price, and uh, the <clears throat> the train is leaving the, the 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 station, and you are optimizing the pennies, and then you are you are losing the uh, the big gain. So this is this is one one way of being penny wise and dollar foolish, and the other way to be penny wise and dollar foolish is that if you if you have a money on a on an investment account and uh, and you are successful at the beginning or you are successful uh, and you are making some 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 gains sometimes we tend to look at uh, the amount of money we have on our account as a number so you you actually lose the sense of value of the money you are playing with and uh, and, uh, and 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 you are losing much more than uh, than what you would otherwise uh, uh, how to say uh, lose in a uh, or uh, what you otherwise would be willing to lose in in a real uh, life situation um, because uh, uh, you don't look at it anymore as a money but you look at uh, you look at it as, uh, as, as as just a number then the next one is interesting the fear fear of missing out is uh, is an interesting one and uh, and maybe Gaspar you can also explain your experience um, when you are when you are getting in in relationship with a with a stock or with 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 any kind of uh, in investment opportunity, so when it gets on your radar screen, and then you see uh, uh, the daily movements up and down, and you you start to how to say you start to have a relationship with it, and you you start to uh, how to say a feeling starts to come where you say oh, I want to buy this, I want to be in this, and uh, uh, because I, I want to be in there when, when it wins. And this is this famous fear of missing out feeling, which is coming from the stomach. And, uh, and uh, uh, it, it can lead to uh, you chasing the price. And most of the investors, or how to say, most of the, the people who are, who are investing uh, uh, their, their precious money and they, they try to beat the market, they fall into this trap, is that you are chasing the price you are buying it uh, too expensive, and the next day it goes down. And then you start, <clears throat> then you start thinking, "Oh my God, what what a mistake I did!" And then you start to calculate, "Okay, how much I can afford to lose?" And then then it goes down further, down further, down, 
uh, which at, at, the, at, at one point the pain will be so high that you will say, I'm, I'm selling it. The day you sold it, it will uh, start to go back up. <laughs> and this, is, this can be a repeating cycle and it, it can be a, a, a repeating cycle. Uh, so one mistake triggers another mistake. Um, and you are so desperate to, to make up your losses that, that you can ev even lose all of your money. So, so, and with trading, and this is why, you know, we started the question, uh, tra is trading a good idea? With trading, you are, you are actually, how to say, uh, you have a much higher chance to make m much, uh, so more mistakes. And if you are not careful, you can lose a lot of money. That's why you wanted to say something. No, I, I just want to say maybe some people in the audience are thinking, yeah, yeah, I know, and that's not going to happen to me. <laughs> and believe me, it's going to happen to you, right? So if you if you trade, if you if you go into this very often uh, going and out of stocks, you will do all those mistakes. I think um, both Isvan and I, when you look at the mistakes that you can make uh, um, by trading, we tip them all of them right <laughs> including this one right so so you think you are not it's not going to happen to you but it, it does right so that's why we are recommending to invest which is much more of a long-term thing and if you buy and it goes down so what if you're convinced this thing will go up just relax and drink uh, have a drink and, and and wait no don't start buying and selling every day because you will just drown. and uh, there's this five Five to one pain and pleasure, which is uh, which is also important, and this is also the emotions messing up with you. So, if you have a gain of let's say hundred thousand uh, dollar, the pleasure you feel is actually five times less than the pain you feel when you lose a hundred thousand. And uh, and therefore, you know, it's, so it's it's like, oh, okay, I'm successful. Uh, I I made a hundred thousand. You 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 don't. Uh, because of this, uh, you feel like uh, uh, it's not enough. Uh, and believe me, when you are losing it, uh, it's, it's painful like hell. And as I said, it's, um, they did studies on that one. It's five times more, more the pain. And then the question is, can you deal with that pain? Um, bottom line, it's impossible to time the market. It's impossible to pick at the bottom and, um, and, uh, and sell at the peak. And uh, on top trading is time consuming. So if you click once more, uh, Cobus uh, trading is, is, is not really a good idea for, for the most of us. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's our summary. So we, we would suggest you to, uh, to invest uh, versus trading. Uh, Cobus, can you please click? Cobus. OK, good. Thank you. Next one. Good. Now we come to the point uh, how to invest in this environment, and um, uh, don't I don't go into the details. You see the money printing at the at the top. So we talked about the the the, the amount of money the governments are, are printing and, and pumping into the market. Um, we you see that the paper cash uh, <coughs> part of the pyramid is expanding and expanding. In this environment, you have to move your wealth uh, from from cash dependent to real assets and uh, and uh, into assets which will benefit from the currency devaluation and now we uh, let's go once more Kobus. so um and now we, t we talk about uh, um two things uh, um and 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 uh, some of the vehicles we would suggest uh, for you to choose and one is uh one is a uh, is an etf uh, so uh, exchange traded fund this is a relatively new um, um, kind of investment uh, vehicle. Um, it's, uh, it's actually a basket of, uh, of stocks uh, or uh, commodities or, or a basket of uh, how to say, stocks of companies of a specific uh, industry, uh, which are designed to track uh, a particular index or, or, or a price of a commodity or, 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 a, or, 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 a, or a particular industry. And, uh, if you buy an ETF, it's it's uh, it's uh, practically what it means. You are diverse, diversified by definition. Because if you buy an uh, an ETF on on the Standard and Poor, and we will look at that example, uh, you are actually buying the uh, the the 500 most powerful companies uh, of of the U.S. You can do that also for commodity. If you if you if you want to invest into commodity, we will we will talk about that. 
And at the bottom, there is this leverage. So there are also ETFs, which are, uh, <clears throat> how to say, moving proportionally two or three times uh, um, uh, the value of the underlying index. This is uh, with the comment, not for rookies. Uh, it's, it's, also, it's really for, for experienced uh, uh, investors. Hey, one, 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 com one, one comment about ETF. Um, uh, the name means exchange traded funds. But you shouldn't confuse it with not regular funds. So when you invest in a, a fund which is managed by a company, imagine you have a company, they have a fund and you put money there. These guys are buying and selling stocks and typically they charge you a lot of money for it. So they take out um, a percentage of your money every year, no matter if it goes up and down. And at the end, they, they erode it from your, from your money. The beauty of exchange, exchange traded funds is that it's very cheap. So you pay in the range of 0.2% per year. And like the SP500, you just follow the market and you, you don't pay uh, big amounts of money. So it's, it's, it's not the same than a, a normal fund. Yeah. So it's, it's actually, there are no, no, or there are low management fees. And then the, the only thing what, uh, what they are doing is they are, as the as the indexes are rotating in and out companies they are they are actually adjusting the uh, the basket to that so that the how to say the basket is always representing for instance if we now talk about standard and poor 500 the 500 more, uh, biggest companies of the us if an etf is is mirroring that then uh, then they will always it will always contain the 500 companies which are at that point in time in, in smp now there is a question what percentage of investors are able to beat the market because you know the idea is okay why an etf uh, you you buy the market but uh, can you be smarter than the market so what do you think and i'm not going to wait too long because we are running out of time so maybe cobos you click um I think the stunning thing is that 95% uh, of the investors are not able to beat the market and 85% of the professional investors who, whom Gaspar was talking about, you know, who are man managing a lot of money and big funds, etc. 85% of them, they do not beat the market. Uh, so, so let's go to the next one is uh, um, if you cannot practically what we want to say is uh, if you cannot beat the market on the market so so buy an etf on an index uh, and then um, and then uh, um, don't worry about the rest uh, click two more uh, cobus please because what you see is that if you own the market um, and you look at the period from from um, 1990 until today uh, as an example the s&p 500 um, generated seven and a half percent yearly returns Including, so, and two, then, including two big crises in 2000 and 2008. So even with yeah. a crisis, you still generate seven and a half percent a year. Yes, and if you look at if you look at uh, the last ten years, uh, fourteen percent on a yearly basis. Now, if you if you think back these uh, scenarios, you know you start investing five thousand uh, every year. Um, uh, practically from from 1990 until 2020, you would have already your million. And it's just uh, in every year, five thousand uh, uh, dollars into an ETF, and then you bought the market, you own the market, and then you also uh, how to say uh, capitalize on the returns. Next one. So it's a good idea uh, to buy um, an ETF, and uh, and it's a good idea to own the market. Now the question is, right now in this moment. Uh, should you start investing or, or should you wait for a bigger correction? Because don't forget, we, we talked about, you know, we are, uh, we have this debt crisis and, uh, and, uh, and uh, the, the, uh, the, the central banks are printing uh, this uh, huge amount of money. They are inflating uh, uh, the, the currency or the paper money. And uh, is this good in this environment? And, and uh, will there be a correction? And uh, should you wait for the correction? Now, what you see on 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 uh, on the right hand side first is that we have a very similar bubble now as uh, as uh, as we used to have in 2000. So, the most probably there will be a correction, and there is some data to to, to prove that. And Gaspar, you chip in whenever you want. I mean, one data is uh, <clears throat> is for instance, and you can you can click uh, one more uh, Cobus is uh, you know what. <clears throat> Uh, percentage of uh, 
the S&P 500, uh, for instance, is, uh, is owned by the five largest stocks. And, uh, and if you look at uh, what happened in 2000, where you see also that there were five different companies who were the, the how to say, the, the five biggest at that time. But uh, they they had nearly 20% uh, of the S&P 500. And today, which is, I think, the data from yesterday, Gaspar, we are at 23%. So if you look at uh, the S&P 500, Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, and Alphabet, and, and Facebook all together, they are 23% uh, <clears throat> of the whole uh, S&P 500. So five companies uh, uh, representing uh, uh, 23% uh, of the value of the total 500, which is, um, and it happened in 2000, it's, it's happening again. It's most probably, it, it is giving a clue that there will be a correction. Next it, one. It doesn't end well normally, this situation. Yes. <laughs> yes. And um, the, the chart on the right hand side is actually um, explaining it uh, very well. Um, at the bottom, the blue line, you see the, the, the P ratio of the total market. And uh, you see uh, with the red circles and the arrows that uh, whenever the, uh, the P ratios uh, peaked, uh, normally it was followed by, by a period of uh, correction and then a sideways uh, movement. So it happened in uh, 1930s, it happened in, uh, in the 70s, it happened also in 2000. And it's uh, most probably going to happen right now. And then what you also see is that whenever the, 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 the price earning ratio of the total market was uh, um, uh, below a certain level and, uh, and from there it started to grow, that was the phase of the market when, when, the, when, the, when the whole market went up. On, um, the, um, on the left, yeah. Go, um, no, maybe you finish. I, I, there was a question yeah. that fits to this and I'll, I'll use it. Yeah, okay, okay. On the, left, all, on the left hand side, you see um, uh, um, a, a statistic about the P ratios. And on the, at the top, it, uh, the 20 uh, year forward annual return. And then on the, at the bottom, the 10 year uh, annual, uh, forward annual return. So what is the return you can expect on a yearly basis, forward looking? And, uh, and where are we right now? So we are right now around this, uh, for the total market at 25. And you see that, uh, that uh, the 20-year the forward-looking return is about, what, 2 two, three 3%. So the probability that, uh, that the market will not continue to go up is high. And uh, it's advisable to wait until the, the P ratio of the total market is coming back to, uh, to something more normal. Of course, uh, this is a special time with all this money printing, but according to the past history, uh, it looks like this is not really the good time to start investing into the market. Yeah. And now, okay. Gaspar. Yeah, so first, with that, we don't mean that ETFs are not good. Actually, we are recommending ETF. It's just the very moment right now is not a good one. But I wanted to link this to a question. So there was a question about how much do I need to invest um, if I have 15 years till my retirement and I want $5 million uh, at the end, right? And mm -hmm. if you uh, invest in something that gives you 7% in 15 years, you need to have something like $1.8 million now to get to $5 million after 15 years at 7%. Now, if instead of at uh, um, 7%, remember this is slide, two slides ago, the, the, if you buy at the right time, S&P 500 may give you up to 14%. And at 14%, instead of uh, 1.8 million, you will need 700,000. Uh, or even farther, I'm making about 35% myself. And uh, with that, you would only need 100,000 to get 5 million in 15 years. So it, it depends. But the key point is, if you are young and you have time, and you don't have you have time before retirement and you cannot spend an endless amount of hours, it's okay to invest on ETF even now. If it goes down, it will go back up and you have the time, it, it will give you this 7%, which is not bad. If you are more in a hurry, like this uh, question, where you have 15 years to get 5 million, then that will force you to pay attention to these type of things, right? So you cannot afford just 
put money blindly, which still works, eh? will give you a still a 7%, then it will force you to check where we are in this uh, current moment. Maybe now don't invest on ETF, but on something else. And then in two years, probably you need to change the money to ETF because they crashed the market and now's the time to put the money in and so on and so forth. So it's not impossible to make 5 million with 100,000. It just, uh, the, the more aggressive you are, the more dynamic you need to be. And linking that to the previous conversation from Ishvan, the more dynamic you are, the more risks you take, right? So it's a, it's a trade-off. Okay, so let's move on. So we talked about ETFs and then really ETFs. And, and I think the concept what you need to take away is instead of trying to pick stocks, because in this environment, everything is distorted. It's impossible to say which stock will believe, uh, uh, which stock will behave uh, the best way. Um, instead of that, uh, on the market, and the market can give you good enough returns on the long run. And as you saw, uh, 7% annual returns uh, over the last uh, 20 years was not impossible. And even 14% uh, on the 10 years horizon was not uh, not possible. So, so it's a good idea to own the market. When do you go in there? It's, it's, it's based on your risk appetite. But it's also, if you think long term, you can start today. Uh, uh, but I would not put all of my money now into an ETF of S&P 500. I would go step by step. Now, um, another asset class, which is the precious metals, which we believe will, uh, will perform good in the, in the current environment, um, is actually gold and silver. And uh, both have a, a 5,000 years of history of storage of wealth. I, I won't go into the details, but, but what you see on the left-hand side is, uh, is actually every currency um, uh, over time lost its value um, versus uh, the gold. And, uh, and uh, some of them, they lost their value to zero. And if you look at Euro, which is a good currency, right? So it's, it's like a, uh, Europe is, uh, is, uh, is one of the strongest economies. Uh, Euro, <coughs> the Euro is, uh, is a reliable um, uh, money or reliable to, uh, if, I think for you, South Africa is most probably, you, know, you would love to have your money in, in Europe, but look, uh, over the over the period of uh, I think it starts from uh, 1999, so so not not long time ago, so 20 years ago, and uh, the euro lost 85 percent of its value versus the versus the gold. So gold has a has a has a, has a historically uh, acted always as a storage of wealth, and we believe that in the in the period which is which is coming, it will also perform good. Next one, Kobus. Also, some supporting data. So, why do we uh, why do we believe uh, gold is is going to shine? And it's actually, as we speak, I think gold is performing extremely well uh, in the last uh, couple of months. Um, one one other reason is uh, the the re how to say the the correlation of gold price versus the real interest rate. So, the the lower the real interest rate, and what is a real interest rate is actually the 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 yield or the interest what you get uh, on your investment versus the inflation. Um, and this, uh, as an example here, the 10 years bond uh, uh, is used. So the real interest, what you get is, is, is zero. It's close to zero at the moment. And unfortunately, uh, because of this debt uh, trap, uh, all the companies and all the governments are in there. They have, a, a, have an interest to keep that zero because <clears throat> that's the way how they can uh, get rid of the debt. They, 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 they want to inflate their way, way out of debt. So, in this environment, uh, we believe that gold is going to shine. And, uh, and as I said, it's, uh, it, it is actually um, the last couple of months is proving that. If we move to the next one, Kobus. Kobus, thank you. We believe there is a bullish case for, for gold. And then there are two things here, and uh, there is another chart which, uh, which Gaspar prepared, and I think you will explain it more in detail. But, uh, but, uh, but uh, what you see on here is the gold price uh, relative to the so-called M2 money supply. We talked about that uh, later on, is how much money is in the system per capita. Um, and what you, this, is, this is the orange, the blue line. <laughs> the blue, uh, so orange is the gold price, sorry. The blue line is the, uh, is the money supply. And then the, the white uh, curve is the, uh, the real uh, uh, rates or the uh, real yield. And what you see is that, that uh, gold is always following uh, with ups and downs uh, the money supply. And uh, 
because this huge injection of uh, of money in the system in the in the last couple of months um gold has now uh, a period of uh, of catching up and it can it can actually behave uh, much nice uh, so so nicely so as as you see it, it was always bouncing uh, above uh, the blue line um, this will be the case uh, looking forward and uh, and as we told the, the yields are, are 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 at zero and they will be kept at zero now if you don't want to make the mental exercise of flipping the yield curve uh, we we prepared the chart for for you and Gaspar maybe you explain so click one more cobus please Yeah, so here we can see again the money supply in red. And remember, the money supply is growing a lot now because the, the central banks are printing money. So this will not stop. They will keep going up. And gold, which uh, in this chart is in blue, it follows roughly the, the red line. But it goes up and down more than the red line, depending on the treasury yields, So the which in this case is inverted, as Ivan said. So the lower are the, the yields, the, the, the higher goes the gold because the, bo the treasury bonds are the, the typical competitor of, of the gold. So net, in the, here on the right side of this graph, the red line keeps going up and the yields keep going, but there is no chance for the central banks to increase the yields because otherwise they will not be able to pay the debt. So we have like 10 years here ahead of us where gold has uh, a wild field to go up. We are pretty confident that this 85% in 20 years that we saw uh, in a previous chart, now it's going to be accelerated. And therefore, it's a huge opportunity uh, midterm for gold. Next one, Kobus. Thank you, Gaspar. So, <clears throat> and we are going to run out of time. I hope we can continue until we finish. So, so these are the investment alternatives if you want to buy gold. And I hand it over to you, Gaspar, to explain. Yeah. So you can either buy physical gold, uh, the, the, the bars, right? And I'm sure you can do that in South Africa. There are different, um, uh, we talk about that in the guidelines, so I'm not going to spend a lot. But I just mentioned that the physical gold is maybe the safest. You have the bar at home and on, on a gold, but it's also inconvenient and not easy to buy and sell. Paper gold, it's like a stock, right? So you go, you have a broker, you can buy it in the market and it's very liquid. You can sell it with a click and uh, and it's it's very comfortable but there are some pitfalls you need to be careful which one to choose because some are uh, backed by physical gold and some are more synthetic products that are more doubtful that there is real gold behind and we give again instructions in the in the guidelines and finally you can also buy miners the miners are typically making more money than the gold when gold goes up and losing more when gold loses and you can see that in the graph on the left you have there in orange the SP500, which, as we said, is not bad. Gold has been doing better than SP500 lately, and miners even better. So miners is a, if you believe that the gold is going to go up, miners is not a bad uh, investment. And again, back to diversification, maybe you don't want to have all in gold or all in miners, but have a, a ratio of them. Next one. And then uh, another alternative, uh, uh, silver. Um, and sil <coughs> silver has all, even a much more bullish case uh, because um, uh, the price of silver is relatively low uh, to the uh, to the gold. So what you see on the on the left hand side is this uh, uh, gold silver ratio, which is uh, which is at all time high. So it means that the the silver is extremely cheap versus uh, versus the gold. The other thing is uh, what you and and it's, uh, silver is also an industrial metal. And if you think about the usage of silver in in uh, electrical vehicles, etc., so so silver has really a case. The other thing what you what you need to know is the uh, silver is extremely volatile. So so you know like if you don't have the guts, uh, then don't buy silver um, because it can it can really very rapidly go up, but it's also very rapidly go down. But still, um, if you are looking on a, on a long term, uh, silver is is quite a, quite a nice bet. So next one, yeah. And then then whether this is an investment uh, alternative or a, or a favorable lottery. Uh, <clears throat> um, so so we put here Bitcoin, um, and uh, there are many uh, cryptocurrencies out there. Um, 
and we choose Bitcoin because this is the most well known and uh, it uh, it is how to say the most well accepted uh, um, um, cryptocurrency. I mean, the problem with with the cryptocurrencies and also with uh, with Bitcoin, what is unpredictable is whether uh, the governments will invent uh, their own version of it. And you know, you just need to have an algorithm, and you can you can start mining uh, your uh, c- uh, cryptocurrency. Um, and uh, so, like like from that point of view, uh, there could be many versions. But Bitcoin has a, has a specific, uh, so all the, and also the cryptos have a specific. Uh, uh, procedure of halving. So every four years, uh, <clears throat> the amount of Bitcoin can be mined is always halved. So, so it's actually, uh, if you compare that with with uh, uh, with printing money, you cannot print or create Bitcoin uh, um, infinite. So it's it's uh, it's actually if the demand goes up, uh, <clears throat> uh, the supply is 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 actually going down. And uh, the question is, you know, compared to uh, to the standard and poor 500, is Bitcoin um, a good investment? And and uh, what what will trick you on this chart is the logarithmic scale, because if you click Cobos, you will see that uh, <clears throat> that uh, Bitcoin actually in this period, which is between I think 2015 um, and 2017 made 500 percent uh, returns in two and a half years so the question is you know is bitcoin an investment or is a favorable lottery uh, so we believe uh, uh, that the risk is is high but the returns are also high um, it is actually how to say um, um, you you can try to put uh, a small portion of your money into bitcoin and capitalize on this situation uh, which is ahead of us and gaspar for sure you have a comment on that well, yeah, so it, uh, we don't recommend you to put a lot of money there, but maybe it's, um, um, it's worth to try to have a small amount because with the percentages we are talking about here, because look at this line, at the red line, is 500% in two and a half years, and it's not even the biggest slope of Bitcoin, right? So if Bitcoin goes into another of these rushes, you may multiply your money by 100, for example, right? so that can happen. And therefore, you don't put a lot, but if you put, for example, 1%, you can double your money just with that 1%. So it's it's uh, it's worth to put a little amount. There. Yes. And then there was a question, uh, is, is Bitcoin volatile? Yes. Yes, yes, actually, absolutely. Yes, yes. <laughs> So it can it can go up ten uh, percent uh, or or drop ten uh, percent within a day. So so it's actually if you have Bitcoin, um, first of all, you need to think again long term, and not jump in and out. And then secondly, um, you you have to have the guts for it. So it's it's not something which is uh, very safe and very um, uh, smooth. It's it's a rough ride. Yeah, vol- volatility, vol- volatility is not always an enemy. It's it's an uh, an ally too because it it typically drive prices also up, uh, but you need to have a certain personality to play with this or put a little money that you just shut your eyes. <laughs> and, by the, and by the way, there is also another uh, thing here, you know, like if you, if you are, uh, when do you know when you are over invested or when do you know when you are, uh, you're putting your money at the, at the wrong place when you cannot sleep during night. So Gaspar is is even though he's investing millions, he's sleeping very good uh, during night. Uh, so so really, uh, there are these risky things. Uh, we don't recommend uh, to, uh, uh, to to be too how to say uh, aggressive with them because uh, because uh, it it can be really tough uh, on your emotions. Next one, Kobus. Yeah, and then this is the comparing the alternatives. I don't go into the details, but uh, maybe if you click twice, uh, Cobus, then, then some some arrows uh, will pop up. So I think as, as a summary, so so we believe that uh, cash is not really a good idea because uh, if you click once more, uh, Cobus, uh, we believe that inflation will go up. So don't uh, don't keep your your wealth in cash. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's not a good idea at all. Uh, Standard and poor, we didn't put any direction there because most probably it will correct first before it will go up, but then it will provide you a consistent good uh, good returns uh, as we talked about. Uh, gold and silver is uh, is uh, in terms of uh, uh, um, reward uh, stays on this level, 
but uh, we believe that the success rate is, is becoming higher. So the risk uh, is, is actually decreasing uh, with gold and silver. And with Bitcoin, it's the same risky thing, but uh, the rewards uh, can be uh, exponential um, uh, if, uh, if this inflationary environment kicks in. Next one. And then, <clears throat> okay, so we are finishing in five minutes. Very briefly, how to start investing. It all starts with a plan. You have to also, uh, if you want to uh, invest money, you have to have an account for that, a brokerage account. We acknowledge that it's more tricky in South Africa, so you have to uh, ask, uh, seek for advice from a local. You have to allocate money for that. You always have to think about the diversification. And then it's not a, something which is totally running on autopilot, so you have to uh, every now and then look back, uh, um, execute your plan and adjust. And if you click once more, uh, Cobus, uh, <clears throat> what, we, what we were suggesting you to do is uh, think about and look at uh, ETFs, uh, think about the precious metals, uh, because this, we believe, will behave uh, very nicely in the next uh, couple of years. Last click, uh, Kobus, uh, the summary. So final comments, uh, investing is, is, is long term. I don't know how many times I said think, think long term. And it's important for especially young people, start early. So, so don't wait. Diversification, we also mentioned that we are a little bit heavy on, on precious metals at the moment, uh, but, uh, <clears throat> but uh, we, are, we are planning to diversify more as we go. Um, you need to know that you are always taking risk and you also need to know that uh, your, your emotions will trick you and uh, your emotions will, will create uh, your biggest losses. You, so you have to, uh, uh, how to say, create a plan which, which is the least amount of emotion is involved. And last but not least, this is our opinion. So this is not an investment recommendation and we have been wrong before. Um, um, nevertheless, uh, um, how to say, these are the things we see out there in the market. These are, these are how to say, the, uh, the things we extracted from, from what we saw from, from macroeconomics. And this is actually the way uh, we are invested right now. Um, and and right, one, right, right, right now we are right, right? So we are making money. <laughs> uh, but that doesn't guarantee you that the future will. Hey, um, mm. I, I want also to kick on one of the questions. Somebody was asking about real estate. Real estate is also good. It will benefit from the same, from this uh, inflationary environment. It's uh, less liquid, though. So the day we have to sell gold, you just click and sell. Uh, the day you have to sell a house, you know how it goes. And um, I want also to make a comment about real estate. I'm pro it. I have houses myself, too. But um, investing in real estate doesn't mean buying a house where you live that's not investing that's that whether you buy your own house or not whether this is a good investment or not depends on how much you pay for the house versus how much you pay for the rent and you can make an easy calculation whether that save you money or not but if you buy a house for investment and you have it there without renting it or doing anything with it then it's not an investment it's it uh, it, it typically you need to pay to keep the house and taxes and and all sorts of things. So be careful with real estate. But that said, I do it. I think it's a good, uh, a good diversification versus gold and stocks. And maybe last comment. This is not sexy. Isvan and I were, were talking about this presentation. We are coming and presenting to you old-fashioned gold and silver. And it's not that sexy. If we would have had this presentation three years ago or two years ago, we would have talked about asset classes and certain stocks and so on. But look, this is the current situation. This bold fashion gold and silver are going to make a ton of money for sure for the next uh, uh, years and so on. We believe. Eh? We may be wrong, but we believe. And even if it's not sexy, it's the right thing to do. We are not here to show off our technical skills on analysis of Wall Street. We are here to uh, talk about things that can make money. Right? That's what matters. Good. Thank, thanks a lot, Gaspar. Thank you, guys. Sorry for uh, being a little bit longer than we thought. Uh, we had some technical difficulties. So sorry also for this click, click, click. Uh, I think it was a little bit uh, um, difficult to present this this time. You will find uh, the slide deck. Uh, I think Obos will share with you. 
And then uh, on the website, you also we have this freebie, which is uh, uh, this uh, investment, uh, how to say, guidelines, uh, which uh, which Gaspar and I uh, put together. And with again the comment, South Africa is special. We don't know about it, so 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 we have some basics in there, but this is more the start than the finish of the journey. So thanks a lot. It was an honor, and hope you enjoyed the presentation. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you everybody. Thank you. And uh, thank you, guys. Yeah, Sarat is also saying thank, thank you. you. Okay, have a beautiful day, everyone. You will get your slideshows in the email. We will be sending out an email on Friday to everyone for what they've missed. And uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. And I'm looking forward to doing it again with you, Iswan and Gaspar. Um, and everyone, thank you for being on here. Be blessed, be safe, and have a beautiful day. Thank you. Bye. 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 -bye.